the migration. We don't want to have anybody come. We got enough problems in this country, right? We got enough. We have a real wall. We have a real wall. And I know how to build it. And I know how to get them to pay for it. It's very simple. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump renewing his call for a reinforced border as the surge of young illegals intensifies. Thus far, more than 10,000 illegal juveniles have crossed our southern border in October and November. That's more than double the amount during the same time last year, and the increase is starting to drain federal dollars. According to Sylvia Burwell, Secretary of Health and Human Services, her department's running out of money to care for these young illegals who make it across the border. So if that's the case, well, where will the money come from and what will happen to those juveniles? For more, we're pleased to be joined by Jessica Vaughn. Jessica's the Director of Policy Studies at the Center for Immigration Studies. She Skypes in from Franklin, Massachusetts. As always, Jessica, thanks for your time here on Newsmax Prime. Now, glad to be here. we're so glad to have you, but we're concerned about this. The number of illegal minors doubling, but the number of family members crossing together tripling, and the administration insists this is under control. Is it really? No, absolutely not. It's completely out of control, but they could bring it under control if they would change their policy uh, we know because the people who are apprehended, these kids and families who are turning themselves over to the Border Patrol are telling, him, telling them that they're coming now because they know they'll be allowed to stay. And so it's really outrageous that the Secretary of uh, Health and Human Services would uh, send this letter saying that, oh my gosh, we're going to run out of money to care for all these people. They could flip the switch and turn off this flow simply by changing the way they deal with these uh, new arrivals and say and sending them home right away instead of allowing them into the country and then releasing them and and basically dumping them on American communities where state and local taxpayers have to pick up the tab and accommodate them and provide the, the social services and benefits that they need to survive here. Jessica, it's I got to really tell you, I got to tell we look at this and it's as if the administration picks and chooses on rulings from judges. In one case, you have a judge saying, oh, the government can't house these kids in overcrowded facilities. But then you have another uh, court ruling saying, stop, you don't have the authority to bring these people in, whether uh, extending uh, worker permits or for whatever reason. Is this administration just the bottom line, ignoring the law, saying we're going to bring in as many people as we can and we dare the courts and we dare the Congress to try and stop us? Well, they're definitely uh, a stickler for the law when they go around telling everyone that they have no choice but to release all these kids and families into the United States. That's not true. They are choosing to interpret the law in a way that has this result. It's not required by the law. And the biggest thing that they could do to stop this flow would be to stop the catch and release policy that they have now and allowing people to simply stay here, giving them the most generous form of due process so they get to wait here for years for a court hearing that they might never show up for. And in the meantime, the state and local governments have to pick up the tab. They could shut this off at the border if they chose to, even before the border, if they chose to put some pressure on Mexico and the other Central American countries to keep people near, you know, in their own country rather than allow facilitating this illegal migration here. But they don't care. They uh, seem to welcome it. And uh, that's why well, we have you know, And we know why they're looking for new voters and they can't get out the votes. So they want to bring in a new vote and have these people become citizens. Look, we got about a minute left and I'm just kind of curious. Almost 10 years ago, I wrote the book, Whatever It Takes. I also, during my days in Congress, authored the Enforcement First Act, which sadly President Bush 43 wanted nothing to do with. Uh, but we used to hear in those days that Mexico would crack down on illegals coming from Central America. Why does it seem now that Mexico is letting the Central Americans go through their territory and come on to the U.S.? Well, because they know this is not really their problem and they're not being incentivized by the Obama administration to do something about it. For a while they did, 
so that the administration could claim that they'd solved it. But, you know, the smugglers figure out new routes, too, and new ways around and new officials to bribe in Mexico. So, um, but we could definitely be leaning on the Mexican government, as you said, and, and we've had successful operations in Mexico before. Yeah, you know what's just so sad, though? We have Mexican president after Mexican president coming here and lecturing us on allowing their citizens to come here. It's just a sad thing all the way around. Jessica Vaughn, as always, we thank you for your time and insights. You heard what Jessica had to say. What do you have to say on this topic? Send me your comments at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Now, we talked about Mexico. What about millennials in the United States? Could they be voting GOP? We'll talk about it next.